Welcome to this rapid fire Excel tips and tricks video. On this episode, I'll be sharing some time saving tips that you can use in Excel. So sit back, grab your favorite drink, and let's get down to it. These are rapid fire tips, so I'll try to get straight to the point for each of them. Let's start off with some tips on working with data in the grid. Right click drag selection. I learned this one from Mr. Excel. If you select cells in the grid, you can click the edge of the selection and move the data around to reposition it. That's not the tip though. The not so obvious thing to do here is to right click the edge and drag it. Then when you drag and drop the range, you'll immediately get a menu with some options. The one I use all the time is copy here as values. This will turn your formulas into numbers and text. And the extra tip here is you can right click drag the data back onto itself to quickly convert formulas to values. Auto sum. The auto sum command works in a couple of different ways. You can select the numbers you want to sum and then press auto sum to immediately add the formula to the bottom. You can also just select the cell at the bottom of the numbers and press auto sum which will select the cells above and leave you in edit mode to alter the formula. Double click fill handle. Using the double click fill handle in Excel can be helpful when you need to quickly fill down a formula or data across a large range of cells. To do this, select the cell containing the formula or data you want to fill down, then double click the fill handle. Excel will automatically fill down the formula or data to the last non empty cell. Flash fill. Type in the desired transformation or pattern you want to apply to the data in a few cells right next to the data. Excel will detect the pattern and suggest the remaining transformations for the entire column. You can then review and accept the suggested changes or make adjustments as needed. For example, if you have a column with full names and you want to extract the first names into a new column, you can type in the first name in a few cells and use flash fill to automatically extract the first names from the rest of the column. If Excel isn't picking up the pattern or you missed the button to do it, you can manually trigger flash fill by pressing control plus E. Debug in the formula bar. If you want to debug errors in your formula faster than using the evaluate formula dialog, then this tip is for you. Simply select a part of the formula and press F9 to see the calculated results. This works great to give you an idea of what's coming back for each part of the formula so you can understand the problem and get to fixing it. Now let's jump into some tips and tricks on navigating and formatting the grid. Snap to grid lines. If you're trying to line up a chart to the grid lines, this tip will save you a bunch of frustration. Simply alt plus drag when resizing to have the chart snap to the grid lines, creating that perfect layout for your dashboard. Note that this will work with other floating objects too, like shapes. Sort and filter by icons. This tip is one of my favorites. After you apply icons or a color conditional format to a range, you can quickly get to those cells in a couple ways. One, use sort to bubble up the icon or formatting you want to see. Two, use filter to see only certain icons and formatting. Format Painter A lot of people use Format Painter to replicate the formatting of one cell or object to another. The tip not everyone knows is if you're going to do a lot of format painting with a single style, you can double click the format painter button to put it in format painter mode. This allows you to take one style and allow you to apply it to many selections without having to select the format painter command for each one. To exit the mode, simply press escape. Formulas and shapes. If you want a nice big number for a dashboard, but don't want to have cells that are sized really large, you can select a shape and then type a formula in the formula bar to have it show in the shape text. The value will update as the worksheet recalculates, and you can adjust and put it anywhere on the grid while leaving the cells a reasonable size. Double click edge of cell. If you double click the green border on the active cell selection, the selection will move to the end of the data in that direction. You can also hold down shift when you do this to select the range. It's a quick way with the mouse to select a block of data. Of course, you can always use the control plus arrow keys to do this with the keyboard. Now let's look at some general Excel configuration options that can get you moving quickly. Launch into a blank workbook. Skip the splash screen and go straight into an empty document when you launch Excel. In the file menu, choose options at the bottom, then in the general section, uncheck, show the start screen when this application starts. Clear up the title bar. There's a lot of commands in the title bar area. To help get some of that space back, you can move the search box into an icon. 
Just check the setting in that same options dialog that says collapse the Microsoft search box by default. Customize the ribbon. Excel has a lot of commands and a customizable interface. If you right-click anywhere in the ribbon and choose Customize Ribbon, you can add, remove, and create new groupings. I use this to do a few things. One, I remove tabs and commands I don't use as often, making it easier to find the things I do use. You can always use Alt plus Q to quickly search for a command. Two, I use icons for some of the names, just makes it a bit easier to parse. Remember on Windows, you can use Windows key plus semicolon to open the emoji picker. Three, I pull forward some commands to the Home tab to give me quick access to them, such as the Name Manager. What you use differs from others, the point being make the ribbon customized for you. Quick Access Toolbar I learned this one from Minda Tracy at my online training hub. When you press the Alt key and look at the Quick Access Toolbar, you'll see numbers for each of the commands there. You can leverage that first spot to make Alt plus 1 a quick keyboard shortcut for a common command you use. For me, I use it for paste values. Bonus tip. If you're using a lot of shapes in Excel, you can create them in PowerPoint and copy them over. But why create them in PowerPoint, you ask? Well, PowerPoint has a lot more shape options, such as merging shapes with Union or Extract to create another shape. You can also use the eyedropper to set the shape fill based on another color. A tip with the eyedropper. If you want to select a color outside the PowerPoint window, you have to hold the left mouse button down as you exit the window. And that's it. Thanks for tuning in for these rapid fire tips. Remember, whether you're a data analyst or just a casual user, always excel with confidence. See you at the next episode.